Hi guys, today we are going to learn about the mean value theorem and the Rolls theorem. What's the mean value theorem? The mean, mean value theorem tells you that if a function f is continuous on the closed interval ab and differentiable on the interval ab, then there's at least one number c inside the interval ab such that f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. Let me get my ruler so I can do my line here. Okay, so what's the meaning of the situation? What this situation is telling you verbally is that the tangent line, okay, the tangent line, okay, uh, is parallel, okay, parallel uh, to the secant line, okay. Uh, in other words, what you have here is that the slope, okay, uh, of the tangent line, okay, is what? Is equal, okay, um, to the slope of the secant line, okay? So, uh, these three are equivalent. Okay, so you have two conditions, so you know that uh, if these two conditions are met, then there exists at least what c, one c inside the interval a b such that f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. Okay, uh, so back in the day, um, if uh, one guy, Rolf, okay, discovered that if f of a and f of b are equal, we have a special case of the mean value theorem that it's called the Rolle's theorem, okay? So what Rolle uh, figured out is that if you have a function, again, being continuous on the closed interval a, b, differentiable on the, close in, on the open interval a, b, and then if f of a and f of b are equal, then there exists at least one number c inside the interval a, b, such that f prime of c is going to be equal to zero. Verbally speaking, this, what it means is that the tangent line Okay, uh, the tangent line, what's the business of the tangent line? Is horizontal, okay? Uh, in other words, what this is telling you is that the slope, okay, of the tangent line is what? Zero, okay, uh, is zero. So as you can see, this is a subset, okay, of the mean value theorem, okay? Uh, as you can see, these are the three ways that we can write the conclusion. Of course, since we like math, uh, the notation with math is the one that we always prefer. Okay? Uh, so let's look at one problem so you can see uh, that it's pretty straightforward. Okay? Uh, so we need to show that the conditions of Rolle's theorem are met. Uh, if that happens, find the C that Rolle's theorem guarantees. Okay? So here we have... Um, quadratic equation f of x is equal to x squared minus x minus 6 in the interval and uh, negative 2 3 so uh, what you're going to do is first you need to make sure that you can use uh, in this situation Rolle's theorem Rolle's theorem has three conditions okay so the first condition is this function is f uh, continuous okay on the interval uh, negative 2, 3, ask yourself, is a quadratic equation continuous? Absolutely, it's continuous everywhere, moreover, over a specific interval. Is it differentiable, okay, on the open interval uh, negative 2, 3? Do you see any situation where you have a cusp, a sharp turn, or uh, some kind of discontinuity? Absolutely not. So you know that it's, again, a parabola facing up, so everything is unicorns and rainbows so far. Uh, the third condition here is that your f of a, meaning f of negative 2, is equal to your f of 3. Let's compute it. You plug negative 2 here, so you have that that's going to be what? That's going to be 4 plus 2 minus 6, that's going to be 0. And then uh, you have the 3, 3 squared is 9, minus 3 minus 6, that's another 0, so they are equal, check. So uh, what you can see here is that uh, Rolle's uh, theorem uh, holds. What's the meaning of uh, the theorem holding? There exists a number c inside the interval, negative 2, 3, okay, such that you know that f of uh, f prime of c is going to be equal to 0. Now the business is we want to find this guy, okay, c. 
what are we going to do uh, to find C? Well, I told you, when in doubt, what are you going to do? Always take the derivative. So if you take the derivative of this guy, you can see that the derivative of F is going to be equal to 2x minus 1. Okay, so we have the derivative and we want it to be equalized to 0 because that's what Rolle's theorem tells you. Okay, so you have that uh, 2x minus 1 is going to be equal to 0 and you're going to, as usual, solve it uh, for x. If you solve it for x, what do you have? x is equal to 1 half. Here you need to make sure that you uh, see if this guy belongs to the interval. What do you see there? Since 1 half is indeed inside the interval negative 2, 3, what can you uh, say then? C is equal to 1 half. And you are super happy. I will quote that. So that's it for this problem. So for this problem, uh, they give you the function f of x is equal to 3 minus 5 divided by x on the interval 1, 5. Okay, so we're looking at the interval 1 over here, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, uh, so that's the interval uh, of interest for this problem. Okay. So the graph of f of x is shown on the right, okay, so this guy is f, okay. Uh, visually, what's the MVT trying to find? Draw it, okay. So what's the, uh, what's the theorem trying to find? What you can see is that this function, you can see that from 1 to 5, the function is clearly continuous there. If you see the problem that you have is at 0, so that's not part of the interval, you are safe, okay. Uh, so what's the business here? What the MVT tells you, okay. Uh, by MBT, uh, what the MBT is telling you? Well, what you have is you can find uh, your f of 1. Do you agree with that? Your f of 1, if you plug the 1, you have that that's going to be negative 2. Okay? You can see it when you plug it in or when you visually find your 1 and this is going to be the negative 2. Okay? Your f of, uh, what's the other one? 5. Okay, if I plug 5 here, you know that that's going to be positive 2. In addition, that's obviously consistent with the graph that we have here, right, which is 2. Okay, so what the theorem is telling you is that we have this beautiful secant line. Let's draw it here. This guy that I just drew here, okay, that is your uh, secant line. Do you see it? Okay, so this theorem, what it's telling you is that the secant line, this famous secant line, is parallel to the tangent line. So parallel, to, 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 to. so it's guaranteeing that um, this point that you see over here, okay, it's guaranteeing the existence of that, uh, okay, that C. So you can see there, well, we can visually see that here is C comma F of C, right? So why? Because it's continuous, it's differentiable. Uh, beautiful, right? Do you see it there? So this is the guy that we want to find uh, for the mean value theorem and the one that we are saying that it does exist, okay? So you can see that uh, f prime of c is going to be obviously the slope of that, okay? So what we find is the slope of this guy, which you know that it's going to be from here, uh, rise over run from algebra 1 and so forth, you know that it's going to be 2 minus minus 2 divided by what? Uh, 5 minus 1. So you have that this is 4 over 4, which is 1. So the slope of this thing is 1, and the slope of this thing is 1. Okay? Uh, so that's what the mean value theorem is telling you. Uh, more elegantly here for part B, we're going to show that the mean value theorem applies and find the C that the theorem guarantees. Okay? So we do know that uh, condition number 1, F is uh, continuous on my interval uh, 1, 5. You can see it there visually here and also algebraically here. You know that the only problem that you have is at 0. Okay. Secondly, the second condition you do see that is uh, differentiable on the interval 1, 5. Okay. So check, check. And then uh, now you know that the MBT, MBT uh, holds. Therefore, what you have is that um, there exists a C inside the interval 1, 5 uh, such that what's going on here such that F prime of C is equal to technically speaking um, F of 5 minus F of 1 divided by 5 minus 1 but we already compute this and we know that this is 1 from part A okay 
Uh, so this is what we already know that there's a C that exists there. So now the business is finding the C. So what are we going to do here? Well, you need to find the derivative of F. So look at your F. What's the derivative there? Remember, if you are taking the derivative of that thing, I would take it as what? 3 minus 5 uh, x to the power of negative 1. So you can see that that 5 is positive divided by x squared. Okay, so what are you going to do here? You are going to set your derivative, which is this one, to be equal to 1, and then you are going to solve for x. So for x, so you can see that you have that x squared is equal to 5, therefore what do you have? x is equal to plus minus root 5. Now, be careful with this root 5. Why? What's the business with that root 5? You can see that the negative uh, root 5 is not inside uh, the interval 1, 5. Okay, so this guy is not your C. But since uh, root 5 is inside your inter the interval 1, 5, what do you know? Then we know that uh, C is equal to the famous root 5, and that is your C. Isn't that simple? Well, I hope that you find this video helpful. Bye.